welcome to our online service this morning. I want to believe that uh, you've always been blessed by our service every Sunday when we bring to you live. And today we thank God that uh, it's another opportunity for us to be blessed of the Lord. Today, as you follow us on uh, our online uh, YouTube, I want to ask you to leave a comment there and subscribe to our channel and you'll be blessed. Those who are following us on Facebook, please like the page and just leave a comment and tell us how the service has blessed you. Uh, God is still on the throne, even at this time of his silence. I know this week we have registered the highest number of uh, new infection of the pandemic, COVID-19. But God has kept you alive and me, and we bless the Lord. So as we begin our service, let's start with our word of prayer. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our loving Father and Almighty God, we are grateful to you this morning. The Lord, you've given us this opportunity to come in your presence to worship you, to lift up your name and exalt you, King of glory. We thank you because we know you are Lord every time you remain to be our God and our Father. We thank you for the salvation you've given to us. We thank you for protection you've given to us. We thank you for your people. Lord, as we listen to your word today, may you minister to us in a special way. This morning, we remember this nation. We pray for our leaders. We pray, God, Father, that, Lord, you may give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. As they lead us, O oh God, Father, let them do according to your will in the name of Jesus. We pray, King of glory, Father, for our church, the family. We cover them with the blood of Jesus that you, Lord, you may protect each one of us from this COVID-19. And Lord, Father, we may remain be safe, Lord. Let your presence accompany us in this fellowship today. We give you glory and honor for it is in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen and amen. Amen. And now today we want to get the worship. Immediately after the worship, we'll be getting the word of the Lord. So I want to invite the worship team to come. Please, uh, let's give a hand to the Lord as the worship comes to give us a time of devotion in the presence of the Lord. Welcome, worship team. Good morning, team. church. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's a wonderful day that the Lord has given unto us that we've gathered together to worship Him. I believe wherever you are, whether in your sitting room, whether at the, your place of work as you're watching us this morning, we just encourage you to join with us as we worship the Lord together. For His great, His mighty, the things He does, they are awesome. And that's what we're going to proclaim this morning. We're going to sing about His goodness, about His greatness, because we've tested and seen it. Amen. Lord, we proclaim you now of your mighty power. And you awesome majesty Lord, come upon us now And release your power And let your presence fall Everybody join me, sing, Lord, we proclaim you now We proclaim you now of your mighty power, of, of your, your mighty power, and you're awesome, and your awesome majesty. Lord, fall upon us now and release your power and let. Lord, we proclaim you now, have me sing again. Lord, we proclaim you now of your mighty power, of your mighty power. And you're awesome, and you're awesome, but you see. Lord, come upon us now. Your power and let your presence fall. Oh Lord, 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 oh Lord,
appreciate Jesus in this place. He alone is worth. He deserves all the praise. He deserves all the glory. We've tested and seen that the Lord is God. And that's what we're going to declare today. Put your hands together and as you praise Him. Hallelujah. Oh yes, Jesus. It is good to praise you. Yes. And see that the Lord is so good. Test and see, yes. Test and see that the Lord, that the Lord is so good. Test and see, test and see that the Lord, that the Lord is so good. Test and see, test and see that the Lord, that the Lord is so good. For the Lord is good to us, and His mercies are over all. For the Lord, for the Lord is good to us, and His mercies are over all. Test and see, test and see that the Lord, that the Lord is so good. Test and see, test. And see that the Lord, that the Lord is so good for the Lord. For the Lord is good to us, and His mercies are over all. For the Lord, for the Lord is good to us, and His mercies are over all. Test and see, test and see that the Lord, that the Lord is so good. Test and see, test. See that the Lord, that the Lord is so good for the Lord, for the Lord is good to us, and His mercies are out. Do you believe that the Lord is good? Join us even as we praise Him. Yes, good in the morning, good in the morning, good in the noontime, good in the evening, good up. Good in the noontime, good in the evening, good up for the last time. Good in the morning, good in the noontime, good in the evening, good for the Lord, for the Lord is good to us, and His mercies are over for the Lord, for the Lord is good to us, and His mercies are over all. It is good. To praise, to praise, to praise the Lord, Lord always. always. It is good, it is good to, praise to praise the Lord, the Lord always. always. For the Lord is good to us, and His mercies are over all. For the Lord, for the Lord is good to us, and His mercies are over all. Jesus, indeed you are good. We give you praise, we give you glory, Jesus. We join with the 24 elders, even as we declare that, Lord, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh 
You're the beautiful Lord. We love Your name. Yes, we love Your name, Lord. How we love Your name. How we love Your name, Jesus. You're the beautiful Lord. We love Your Your name, Jesus, you're the beautiful world. We love your name. How oh, we love you, King of Kings, the King of Kings. How oh, we love you, Lord of all, Lord of all. How oh, we love you. of your holy name you came and brought us water you came and brought us into the reign of grace we love the fragrance we love the fragrance of your holy name you came and brought us Lord you came and brought us into the reign of grace glory to God glory worship team thank you worship team that was so powerful that was so great and we bless the lord and we just want to take a minute and just give thanks to the lord because of his faithfulness lord has been good to us we bless the lord you at home just take a minute and just ask the lord to continue protecting this nation as the word of the lord says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses, nine, uh, verses 8 and 9, it says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Today we want to allow the will of the Lord to be done in this nation as we pray for the healing over this nation, that this pandemic may not consume us, but the Lord may protect us. Father, we thank you because we are your people. And Lord, we've come to you with devotion, Lord. We bless your name and we worship you. We give you glory because, Lord, my Father, you will continually protect us, O oh Lord. I pray for this nation, Lord, my Father, that this pandemic, COVID-19, will not consume us, O oh God, but you will preserve us, O oh God. Even at this moment of your silence, God, Father, you will know, God, that you're still on your throne, O oh God. May you give guidance to this nation, Lord, Father. We pray for the economy, Lord, Father. Preserve us, O oh King of glory, God, Jehovah. My Father, I pray for your people that we will never lack food, O King of glory, because God, you will provide for us divinely, Lord. Give our leadership wisdom and understanding, my Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We honor you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you and uh, welcome uh, to our service. Please don't forget to remind your neighbor your friends that our online service has just started and remember today we we have started a bit early we have started 9 30 so that we can have time after our service we shall be able to have our sunday school coming to us live and then you can also tune
to our service from GCI Central where our bishop will be delivering his message also. You can get time to hear from him. So I want to just bring a few announcements before we proceed. And our first is that uh, our Sunday school service is ready and you can tune, it, tune on it immediately after service and you'll be blessed. Hallelujah. And the second announcement is that today again we are meeting at five in our Zoom meeting. Please gather your family around so that we can be sure that you're doing fine. We want to see you, we want to see your family and just have fellowship together. So be there and God will bless you. Praise the Lord. So this time, uh, let me allow the media team to add some more announcement and you'll be blessed. Welcome from the media desk. Good morning, church. I hope you've enjoyed the service so far at the comfort of your homes. We are so glad that you could join us. Please like our page and also leave a comment or word of encouragement. If this is your first time here, it's been the perfect thing to join us as our lead pastor continues the series on Kenya in the Bible. We know that you will be encouraged, so make plans to join us each week and don't forget to invite someone. If you're watching on Facebook, use a watch party feature and post your watch party to enjoy this service with your friends. The following are our announcements. We wish to notify you that our Sunday school service will be streaming live from 11 a.m. to 11.20 a.m. every Sunday beginning today. Please take note so that our children do not miss out. We have a great service lined up for them, including great music, craft time, and a short lesson by our teacher media. It's Operation Kohama. The church has taken the step to permanently move to our land. As from 1st June 2020, we are pleased to announce that all our church operations will be conducted from our church premises at Don Grove, Mulumani. To make this possible, all of us have to come together and honor our pledges. For those who may not have pledged or wish to make an additional pledge, kindly contact the church administrator on 0740-129-661. Our church pay the number is 649 788 we will pay directly to the account number on your screen. Small groups are the best way to connect and thrive. All of our groups have a place just for you. You can join a growth center within your community by contacting our church administrator on 0740-129-661. The Lord said to Ezekiel that he was looking for someone all over the earth who would stand in the gap before him for the land. We are saying, Lord, look no further. God has called us to make a difference on the earth by inviting him to do only what his power can do. Our daily prayers therefore continue through the week every morning from 5.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. and in the evening from 9.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. And finally, at 5 p.m. today, we will have a 30 minutes church meeting on Zoom for all members. The Zoom connection link will be shared on the GCI Kitengela WhatsApp page. All church members are encouraged to join. And that's it for your weekly announcements. Enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you for those announcements. Uh, God bless you so much. We want to give an offering to the Lord this morning. And I know our choir has prepared a number for us. And uh, we are going to, 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 to bless the Lord as we give our offerings unto the Lord. So we want to begin by uh, prayer. And uh, as you give our offering, our pay bill number is 6497-88. So you can share your offering and you'll be blessed. Let me pray for the offering. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you because of the offering. As your people give unto you, may you bless them. May you bless the works of their hand as they bring unto you. Lord, we lift up your name because you are faithful and you are mighty God. Receive all praise, all glory and honor. Father, we thank you because of the givings of project. We thank you because of the tithes. We thank you because of the thanksgiving. Lord, bless your people. 
let them father give unto you joyfully lord remember our workplaces oh god may you protect and keep us safe oh lord we worship your holy name and we give you praise in jesus name Amen. choir please welcome give us a number as we Kwa 
Nateka maisha yao Na kuangamiza wengi Kwa msada wako wakika tutashina Kwa wema wako tajua tutaweza Kulitangaza eno lako Kwa mataifa yote Thank you, thank you choir, thank you for that good number. God bless you viewers at home, be blessed so much. We want to hear from the Lord this morning and I believe the Lord has a special message for us. We've been learning about Kenya in the Bible and I believe today it's our last, uh, the pastor will be giving us the last uh, series, uh, the last message on this series and you will be blessed. Come on, I want you now to put your hands together as we welcome the servant of God, Pastor Heno Kirungu, to come and give us the word. Welcome, man of God. Once again, we want to thank you uh, uh, for being faithful in watching this telecast and following this telecast wherever you are. All our, our, our social media friends, Facebook, YouTube, we want to thank you for being part of this uh, service. And um, uh, we want to declare to you that the Lord will richly bless you because of your faithfulness of standing with us virtually during this time. Uh, we also, I want to take this opportunity to thank God for all the members of GCI Kitengela, wherever you are in your homes, uh, in your houses, or wherever you are in your office if you're following this service. We are, I want you to know that uh, I'm still praying for you, and the Lord is with you. He will take care of you wherever you are. And no calamity. We reach near your dwelling place, neither where, wherever you are. That is what we are praying for you always. 
And even the ones that I know they are facing challenges from their places of work, those ones that are facing challenges in their businesses, I want you to know that we rely on kingdom economics. So let's keep on keeping our faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, fixing our eyes unto him, because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Could I have an amen? All right. Now we are uh, continuing with a series of our, message, of our messages on Kenya in the Bible. And today is the third part of this message and the last part of this message. Uh, we will be saving these messages in YouTube. You can always visit our YouTube page, our Facebook page. Go like it, subscribe, and you'll be getting these messages. We are specifically recording this one because it is a message for posterity. Could I have an amen? All right. Now, wherever you are, I want you to pick your Bibles and stand up in our living rooms and let's make our confession. Say, this is my Bible. I am what says I am. I have what says I have. I can do what says I can do. Today, I'll be taught the word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, very quickly, turn our Bibles to our base scripture in the book of Isaiah, chapter, one, chapter 18, verse 1 to 7. Isaiah, chapter 18, verse 1 to 7. If you are there, say amen. Now the Bible declares, Woe to the land shadowed with buzzing wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, which sends ambassadors by sea, even in vessels of reed on the waters, saying, Go swift messengers to a nation tall and smooth of skin, to a people terrible from their beginning onward, a nation powerful and treading down whose land the rivers divide. All the inhabitants of the world and dwellers on the earth, when he lifts up a banner on the mountains, you see it. And when he blows a trumpet, you hear it. For so the Lord said to me, I will take my rest, and I will look from my dwelling place like clear heat in sunshine, like a cloud of dew in the heat of harvest. For before the harvest, when the bud is perfect, and the sour grape is ripening in the flower, he will cut, both, he cut off the sprigs with pruning hooks and take away and cut down the branches. Then they will be left together for the mountain birds of prey and for the beasts of the earth. The birds of prey will summer on them and the beasts of the earth will winter on them. In that time, a present will be brought to the Lord of hosts from a people tall and smooth of kin, from a people terrible from the beginning onward, a nation full and treading down, whose land the rivers divide, to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts, to Mount Zion. Let's bow down our heads in prayer. Father, I give you praise, glory, and honor. I thank you for this time that we stand here to share your word. I ask you, Father God, to bless your people, wherever they are, even those that are following from their homes. Lord, I ask you one thing. Never let even a single word fall to the ground. I ask you to anoint me, Lord Jesus, to speak and teach your word. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable unto you. And let your word, Father God, accomplish that which you purpose and prosper to the thing where to you sent it. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people say, Amen and Amen. Now brethren, we are continuing a series of messages on Kenya in the Bible. Could I have an Amen? From this series of messages, we have learned that the prophet Isaiah wrote this prophecy in Isaiah 18 between 70 B.C., and 690 BC, which is about 2,700 years ago. Could I have an amen? We saw that the Bible says in Revelation chapter 17, verse 9, here is the mind that has wisdom. Hallelujah. 
there are many brethren biblical commentaries concerning this scripture. And uh, there are many interpretations that we receive from speaker after speaker and minister after minister. But none of their commentaries I've, I've read and none of what I've heard them speak is close to what the Spirit of God has revealed to me concerning this scripture. Could I have an amen? And therefore, brethren, as per this scripture of uh, Revelation chapter 17 verse 9, I want you to know that it takes application of knowledge and revelation of the Spirit of God to understand the scriptures. Because the Bible says, whatsoever is written in the scriptures is spiritually discerned in accordance with 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Could I have an amen? Now, as we were going through this scripture, we also learned that by revelation that if the prophet Isaiah would have written this prophecy today, it could, have, it could have read as follows. Verse 1 and 2 could have been read as follows. It would have said, Who unto Kenya, the land shadowed with buzzing wings, which is beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, which sends ambassadors by sea, even in vessels of reed on the waters, saying, Go swift messengers to South Sudan, a nation tall, and Ethiopia, a nation smooth of skin, to Somalia, a people terrible from their beginning onward, Uganda, a nation powerful and trading down, and to Tanzania, whose land the rivers divide. Could I have an amen? This is what the prophet Isaiah would have read this scripture, being in picture of what all these nations are and with the names that they've been given today. Could I have an amen? So we have seen that the shape of Kenya we have seen the history of Kenya. We have seen the geography of Kenya. We have seen the way the economy of Kenya has behaved. We have also viewed the politics of Kenya and the trend and the curses of aborting the harvest for this great nation of Kenya. And we came to a conclusion that this prophecy perfectly fits Kenya as it is today. Could I have an amen? Now this is a wake-up call to all Kenyans wherever they are. And to all the people of East Africa, and to all that, those nations that neighbor Kenya, you need to see what God speaks about us. There is something that God speaks about Kenya. There is something that God speaks about South Sudan. There is something that in this scripture God speaks about Ethiopia. There is something that God speaks about Somalia. There is something that God speaks about Uganda. There is also something that God speaks about Tanzania. Let the peoples of this region sit down. And, uh, and uh, meditate on this scripture and understand what God thinks about this region. Could I have an amen? Now, brethren, the truth is that God has intended to set Kenya as the hub so that to bless all the nations that surround this nation. Could I have an amen? All the neighboring nations around Kenya, the truth of the matter is that your blessing lies with Kenya. And Kenya needs to know this. That these countries will only be blessed if you do your all. Could I have an amen? And therefore, wherever you are, I want you to sit down pretty and listen to what God has been speaking about this nation. You need to go to part one of this message, download part two of this nation, and sit down there and listen to the third and last part of this message, of this scripture, concerning this scripture that talks about Kenya in the Bible. Could I have an amen? Now, brethren, I want to know that much as Kenya has the biggest responsibility, the neighboring nations also, they need to learn that God intends to bless them through Kenya. I know most of them could not believe this, but this is what God is saying. God intends them to be blessed. Let them ensure that they have a good relationship with Kenya, and Kenya must ensure that it has a good relationship with these nations that surround it. Let them cherish the good relationship with Kenya. Hallelujah. And let Kenya cherish the good relationship with all its neighbors. Today, we will look at two prophetic issues about Kenya. The last two remaining issues. And the first thing we'll do is that we look at the second curse about Kenya. There's another curse. Last Sunday, we learned about the first curse. It's a big curse about Kenya, about our aborted harvest. But today, I want us to look at the second curse. There's a curse upon this nation that Christians, wherever you are, you need to know that it is only you who can break this curse. Could I have an amen? Now, and then we look at the results 
of our divine assignment. These two issues, we look at them. I want us to take time and look at these two issues in the next few minutes. Now, let's look at, at Kenya's second, second curse. There's a second curse in the Bible that talks about Kenya. In verse 6, the Bible says, they will be left together for the mountain birds of prey and for the beasts of the earth. This is a heavy statement that underscores the history of Kenya. Could I have an amen? Now, the Bible makes it clear that Kenya's second curse will be that the nation will be preyed by mountains, birds of, mountain birds of prey and with the beasts of the earth. Now, we need to understand what the Bible means by talking about this. Number one, you must understand what a bird of prey, who a bird of prey is. A bird of prey, brethren, is an aerial predator. While a beast, while beasts of the earth are killer animals, and mostly of them, mostly they are actually wild animals. Hallelujah. So from this scripture, you will know that what God means is that it simply means that Kenya would have spates of attacks from the air and from the ground. Kenya would face aerial demonic, demonic attacks and Kenya would face ground demonic attacks. Ostensibly, brethren, that's what it means. It simply means there will be aerial and ground demonic forces that will be unleashed against this nation to oppress the people of Kenya from time to time. Now let's have a look at the east of Kenya. Let's see how, whether this thing has been happening or not. It's over 50 years now, and we'll have a look at it, and we'll be able to see whether it has been happening. Has Kenya been facing some aerial demonic forces and ground demonic forces or not? We will, look, we will study this scripture, and we will know. Could I have an amen? Now, the Bible also says the second, the second thing about this curse. It says what the birds of prey will do and what the, uh, uh, the, the, the beasts of the earth will do. The Bible says the birds of prey will summer on them and the beasts of the earth will winter on them. Think about it, brethren. Now, you need to ask yourself, what is summer and what is winter? Because that is what the birds of, the birds of prey will do against this nation and that is what the beasts of the earth will do against this nation. What is summer? Summer is the time of the year when the sun is hottest and the days are longest. That is the meaning of summer. It is the time of the year when the sun is the hottest and when the days are the longest. It simply means, brethren, that um, Kenya will face long days of very hot moments from the skies. When these demons or aerial demons attack this nation, there will be hot moments and it will not be comfortable seasons for this nation. Now what is winter? Winter is the time of the year when the weather is coldest. Now this responsibility of wintering has been given to the beasts of the, or, or, to the, to the, beasts of the earth. They will be the ones who will winter on this country. Now what it means is that there will be seasons when the love of many in this nation will grow cold. And therefore it will grow the coldest and the people will deal with each, with, with each other like beasts of the wild wood. Could I have a man? That is what simply, it simply means. When the, the Bible talks about that in the last days, the love of many would grow cold. That's what it means. When people cease to love each other, they'll be, they'll be witnessing a winter season in their lives because it has grown cold. And you know what it means when people cease to love each other. The meaning of not loving each other, it simply means the absence of love there is hurt. Could I have an amen? That's what happens. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at, at uh, if, there were any, if there were any attacks from the mountains bird of, birds of prey in this country. Let's look at the history of this nation. Uh, and I, I want to take you through from the history of, nation, uh, of this nation. Kenya was actually officially born in 1963. But before that, there was a battle and a clamor for independence. And during that time, I want you to know that Kenyans began suffering, began facing these attacks from the air, from demonic forces in the air, even before we got our independence. Now, the first thing happened is that yeah, everybody in history, historically, you know, there was an uprising. It was known as the Mau Mau Uprising. Now, for an extended period of time, 
the first battle with the British colonialists. And um, during that time, brethren, for the British to stop, to be able to suppress this uh, uh, uprising, their chief weapon were against the people who were fighting from the forests. It was their power. Now the uh, Brit Britons, they knew that they could not understand the Kenyan ter terrain. And therefore, they could not follow the soldiers in the bush from the ground. So the best thing they did was to attack them from the air. And let me tell you, brethren, when a decision was made and the governor of Kenya at that particular time, where he convinced the British uh, parliament, the Red Kingdom, and the Queen was able to allow uh, 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 the Air Force, the Royal Air Force of the United Kingdom to come to support the colonial government so that they could flush out the, and stop the Mau Mau uprising. Now, between 1953 and 1955, during a colonial operation known as Operation Anvil, they mostly used Lincoln bombers dropping arbitrarily about six million bombs against their perceived suspects in the forest. At that time, it was like a blitzkrieg against Kenyans who were fighting for their rights, who were fighting for their independence, but they were fighting from the forest. So they suffered. The beasts of the air through bombs actually summered on them from the air. It was coming to them like, like, a, like, like mountain birds of prey. Could I have an amen? Now it didn't stop there. The beasts of the air, they didn't stop there. In a, the, everybody knows that these beasts of the air, mountain birds of prey, they come from the air. Now Kenya, uh, the Kenyan army, they, it had a wing. It had an air force wing. And at one time, this air force wing, it decided to take over the government. And that's happened in the year 1982, where some junior officers or from the Kenya Air Force unit of the army, of the armed forces, they attempted a coup d'etat. Now at that time, reports revealed that actually they planned to bomb several government installations so that they could surprise the press, the power, uh, the government that was in power that particular time. However, you all know that the rest is history. That um, their plans were actually curtailed by the army, and some other paramilitary forces that came from the ground. Could I have an amen? So it didn't stop there. Birds, mountain birds of prey, they're continuing, they continue summon, summoning over Kenyans. You all know the history of the 2008 post-election violence. It was so bad, it was so terrible, until the whole world was almost scared by what was happening in this great nation. Now there's one president from Rwanda, at one time when the nations of East Africa were suffering and uh, because they rely on Kenya on the roads and they rely on the port of Mombasa to be able to get some, some, some supplies in their country and it was stopped for only one month. They could not get anything. At one time, the president of Rwanda, President uh, uh, Paul Kigame, uh, he said, he said, he's Paul Kagame, he said that I don't understand how hooligans could block the road, and here there's an army. I'm sure that, that statement was not taken lightly by our Kenyan, our Kenyan defense forces. And that, that is the time they decided to act. And they came from their barracks. And let me tell you, brethren, it didn't take one week. Every chaos that was continuing in Kenya, all the violence was stopped and it was, it was suppressed. I don't know how they did it. I don't have information. But one thing I know, when KDF comes out, brethren, they don't deal lightly with citizens. They are only designed to deal with another nation. And they deal with big equipment and machines. How they stopped it, how they opened the roads, it, I, 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 I'm sure they used everything at their disposal. The only thing I know is that within one week, there were no more chaos in this country. Hallelujah. And I'm sure, I'm fully convinced that they must have used some reasonable air power to stop this violence. So brethren, what am I saying? I'm saying during these dark moments, one could sense tangible presence of demonic forces vexing the atmosphere of Kenya and causing the people of Kenya to suffer immensely. I remember in 2007, 2008, we prayed, we fasted, 
we did many things but now we are not finding any solution until when the army came out and when they stopped that is when the world community international community was able to come and help kenya come up with a solution could i have an amen but it happened after several kenyans had actually died they were summered by the mountain birds of pre referred to in this bible could i have an amen as you can see there's a picture there several of them you can see uh, the the coup leader uh, of the 1982 uh, abortive coup d'etat uh, you can see the royal air force from uh, the isli air base in 1953 they actually the, the isli air base was their base they where they were able to launch attacks against very many kenyans and you can see another picture how the mau maus were suppressed how people who are viewed to be suspects were actually oppressed and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and suppressed by the colonial forces. These are pictures. I think they are worthy. Uh, somebody say a picture is worthy a thousand words. Could I have a man? In the interest of time, those pictures are useful. You can see how Kenya was able to pass through these dark moments from mountain birds of prey. And there were several other examples where there were attacks, aerial attacks from Kenya. It's been coming, it's been happening in the country. Some neighboring nations have had attacked this nation. Uh, from the air at one time or the other, in one way or another. Even a few weeks ago, we had some grenade, some rocket propelled grenade attacks from Somalia to some government offices in Mandera. So it's, it's been happening. It's been happening on and on and on historically. Now let's have a quick look at some at the attacks by beasts of the earth. The, the Bible says, beasts of the earth will winter on them. Hallelujah. Now, Kenyans, brethren, they had really suffered in the hands of beasts of the earth throughout the history of this nation. And it has happened through some security operations. It has happened through some proscribed groups. It has happened through tribal conflicts. It has also happened through terrorism. There was another attack after attack after attack for the last 50 years. Kenyans have actually suffered in the hands of what the Bible talks about, the beasts of the earth. Now, when you look at the history of Kenya, you will find that there were several massacres where many people were killed. Uh, during, before independence, there were two massacres. One of them was known as the Larry Massacre 1 and the Larry Massacre 2. In the Larry, first Larry Massacre, it was presided over by the Momau against uh, lo colonial loyalists. <laughs> and they, they killed Several loyalists, and it was, it, was, it was very bad. Several Kenyans died that day. But then, there was a response from the colonial governments. They went back to Lari again. And they captured the people that were perceived to be suspects. And they killed very many Kenyans. Uh, history, his history records that uh, even some of the Kenyan loyalists who were working with the colonial governments, when they saw what, what the white men did to the Kenyans, to the indigenous Kenyans, they believed that these people are not human beings, the way they handle Kenyans. Even the loyalists were surprised at how can they do such a kind of thing against indigenous people. They saw it and it was bad. It continued. There was another massacre known as the Hola Massacre. It happened in the Hola prison and very many Kenyans were actually killed that day. There was another massacre that was done after independence known as the Wagala Massacre. It happened in a in, um, in Wajia. There's another massacre known as the Garissa Massacre. It happened in the early 90s. There's another massacre that happened in recent history in Masabit, known as the Turbi Massacre, where very many Kenyans were, uh, were killed. There was another massacre against the police. It happened in, the, in a valley known as Suguta Marmar. And over 40 policemen were massacred by locals uh, who were uh, suspected cattle rustlers. And there was another massacre outside, outside the nation where it happened in Somalia where a, Kenya, a KDF base was attacked by Al-Shabaab, a place called El Ade. And uh, it, it is reported that about 60 Kenyan uh, soldiers were killed in that, uh, in, that, uh, in that attack. So you'll find Kenyans have died. Thousands and thousands of Kenyans have been, have been dying by these attacks. And the Bible calls, calls them they come from the birds, uh, the, the, the beasts of the earth. So these ones have been beastly attacks against these Kenyans. Of course, it was, it, it was, it was, a, it, it was being done by human beings, 
but they're behaving basically against the people of Kenya. Oh, brethren, it has not stopped there. Mad, bloodshed has actually continued uh, 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 running down this nation through the hands of proscribed groups uh, among us Kenyans, like the Mungiki, like the SLDF, killed very many Kenyans uh, there, and some of them were maim, some were cut their ears because of being perceived to be working with the government. There was in Mombasa, there was the MRC, uh, Mombasa Republican Council, and their mantra was, Pwanisi Kenya. And several youths actually died. And before that, there was an attack in 1982 known as the, uh, uh, the Kayabombo uh, attack. And it happened in coast again. Shifters have been, had been having a, a, a field day in the parts of Garissa and part of Sana River. Uh, people really suffered in the hands of these groups of proscribed groups that were actually operating in Kenya, and they've been bloodshed after bloodshed after bloodshed. They've, and they've also been attacked by terrorist groups in this nation, and the, and the main ones were conducted by Al-Qaeda and the other one, Al-Shabaab. And they did their thing against the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi. They recently attacked the West Gate shopping mall in Westlands, and then they went to Riverside in Nairobi and attacked another, another hotel known as Dusit, the two hotel. And very many Kenyans, innocent blood was shed in this country. It didn't stop there. The Al Shabaab attacked uh, a, a town in the coast known as Mpeketoni. And several people were killed that particular day. It didn't stop there. They continued attacking a bus after another. It happened in Nairobi where they were even attacking some, uh, there were grenade attacks against Matatus, where some people were maimed and other Kenyans were killed. Uh, they had been bloodshed after bloodshed after bloodshed by this group of Kenyans. Now, brethren, it didn't stop there. We are talking about the, this second curse about Kenya, whereby mountain birds of prey and, uh, uh, and, uh, and beasts of the earth have been causing a lot of bloodshed in this country historically. It's been happening and happening, and you don't know when it can stop. It can only take the believers in this country, the Christians, to deal with aerial demonic forces and the ground demonic forces that are operating in this world on, from altars, in this nation. We must stand wherever we are and break these altars and ensure that Kenya become a safe country whereby we shall be able to perform our divine assignment that God has given us to do it in our time. Now there have been perennial tribal clashes and clan clashes, inter-clan clashes. It happened at Molo. It happens always in Mandera between other some Somali groups such as the Degodia and the rest. It happens in Tana River between the Pokomos and Ormas. It happens in Maasai land. It's been happening recently in, 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 in Transmara. And, uh, and in Kericho also, uh, attacks from one tribe against the other. It, and, and this one has claimed very many, very many lives, innocent, innocent lives. There's been bloodshed in this country. And you see, the country needs to come together and the government come and, and the church so that we can help set up a policy that we can stop the bloodshed. We must stop this bloodshed because it's happening and we don't know whether it can stop. But the Bible, today we are learning here that there is actually a prophecy that these things would happen in this country. But we have to, the question is, until when? Now this question I pose it unto you. Until when will this thing continue happening in Kenya? We don't know when the mountain birds of prey will stop. We don't know when the beasts of the earth would stop this bloodshed. But today, brethren, uh, God has brought you, has kept you alive to hear this message in such a time as this. So that we as the church, and if the government hears, we can do something and ensure that we change the history of Kenya for good. Could I have an amen? Uh, we can see some pictures there. Uh, how the SLDF were maiming, maiming people and cutting people's, cutting people's heads and ears. We can see the shifters doing their things. We can see the proscribed groups such as the MRC, uh, cutting machetes and doing things in this country. What am I saying? I'm saying this one, one not, it, it was not, not just an accident. You can see it is happening and happening from time to time that we need to do something. We need to declare a moratorium over all these things and stop it spiritually and stop it physically. Could I have an amen? Now, brethren, I've got news for you. It, it is not only bad it, uh, the story about Kenya has not always been bad. And uh, uh, God has also prophesied some good things about this nation. N the, the good news is that, that there will be results of Kenya's divine assignment. 
And in verse 7, the Bible says, In that time, a present will be brought to the Lord of hosts from a people tall and smooth of skin and from a people terrible from their beginning onward and a nation powerful and treading down whose land the, diva, the rivers divide to the place of the name of the Lord of hosts to Mount Zion. Could I have an amen? So brethren, this scripture simply says that uh, because Kenya would send ambassadors to this country, because Kenya would go and be uh, and, and send revival in this country, in these countries that surround Kenya, there will be results. The labor of the people of Kenya would not be in vain. As a result of the Kenyan emissaries that will go to Southern Sudan, as a result of the Kenyan emissaries that will go to Ethiopia, as a result of Kenyan emissaries that will go to Uganda and Tanzania, there is going to be a spiritual harvest from these nations. And the Bible says people from these nations will begin actually worshipping the Lord of hosts, the God of Mount Zion, who is also the father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Could I have an amen? Hallelujah. Now, brethren, as I move towards concluding, concluding this message, I want to just to talk to the hearts of the Christians of this country and the people, a citizen of this nation, that Kenya, there are some issues that we need to ponder. And one of the things we need to ponder is Kenya has partly gotten it right. We have not gotten it wrong 100%. We have partly gotten it right. And um, one of the things, one of our, our, our strength is that our fathers, they came up with a very good national anthem. Hallelujah. That national anthem, you cannot fault it. It was actually delivered to this nation in the spirit. It was birthed in the spirit. The choice of the words and the and, uh, and uh, seeking uh, support and uh, praying to the God of all creation, uh, that national anthem, especially the first verse, I can tell you for free, that it was actually birthed in the spirit. Could I have an amen? And the second thing is that Kenya has actually held successful regional and uh, international peacekeeping missions. Uh, we see, especially during the days of President, President Moy, He's the, I always tell that he's one of the presidents who was able to interpret this assignment very easily. And I don't know why. It's because he was working very close with the church. And therefore he concentrated on something known as peacekeeping. And he, he was able to, to, to read su su successful uh, peace talks in Uganda. And that's why Uganda, there's, uh, there's freedom right now. There's peace right now. There's efforts by Kenya. Uh, President Moi tried to bring all those leaders to come and talk to Kenya several times. He presided over peace in southern Sudan. And uh, in, there was peace by that. The Southern Sudan was born, and there's peace in the whole of Sudan right now. So we've been having some successful uh, uh, regional peace, meeting, peace, miss, peace uh, uh, missions, and I believe that this is what God wants us to do. Even in Somalia, uh, the reason why there was Operation Linda Inchi, and then the other operation that uh, decapped the uh, 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 KDM in Somalia to be part of the AU. Uh, army submission, and um, it is part of the same thing, but uh, we, need to, we need to look at the strategy, whether is it in line with the Bible or not. Uh, that is one of the things we need, to, we, we need to look at, but the efforts towards peace is actually uh, in line with the scripture, and the assignment that God has given us. We will send ambassadors. Let me tell you, the work of ambassadors are actually peace emissaries. Could I have an amen? And that's what we are supposed to, to, to do as a nation. And then there's something you need to ponder. Is that the nations aforesaid, including Kenya, uh, there's a challenge that is happening to today. These nations are quickly, they are fast growing into atheisms. They are fast growing into animism. They are fast growing in some religions other than Christianity. And uh, the result of this has actually uh, been very bad. By virtue of growing in such a trajectory, which is an ungodly trajectory, they have become a thorn in the flesh from time to time. These countries, because most of them, they don't fear God, and the people in those countries, they don't fear God, uh, there's a, they've become a thorn in the flesh from time to time. You think about Southern Sudan, you know what they did to Kenyans there after their independence. You 
look about Ethiopia. They've been Kenyans, good neighbors, but when they are following their, <laughs> their rebels, when they, ra they run into Kenya, they also enter into Kenya, and they, are, and they have done some, some bad things against our, our people and our forces. Uh, so, Somalia, I don't, I don't have to talk about it. From 1960, 1960 until now, you know the story. Could I have a man? Uganda, you know what happened to Idi Amin and uh, Mr. Jomo Kenyatta? And the early days of the new president, what, uh, what he also, uh, almost planned to do? From Tanzania, you know the diplomatic, the spats of bad diplomatic relations we've had with them. From the time when the ASC, East African community was broken, until last week in the fight against the, the pandemic. Now, these things have been happening in these nations because it's clear that these nations, they don't understand Kenya and they don't understand the divine mandate that Kenya has been given by God. Now, brethren, I believe the main reason why it's happening like this, why we've been having these moments whereby we have some di diplomatic spats with our neighbors, it's simply because the messenger has not gone. It's because Kenya has not, has not performed its, its divine assignment. If Kenya will begin doing it, and the results will begin coming up, all these challenges we are facing from these nations will all end. We have not gone, the messenger has not gone to reach out to these people, and therefore they are behaving the way they are behaving because they are not getting direction from the living God. Hallelujah. So we need to do something. We need to step up our responsibility and begin working towards sending ambassadors to these countries. The third thing that I wanted to ponder about is that the government actually can actually be exonerated. Uh, we can exonerate the government because it has done well. Uh, where it is good, we must say that it is good. They've done well, although they can do more. Number one, the government have set up diplomatic missions in all these nations. There's a diplomatic mission in Mogadishu. There's a diplomatic mission in Juba. There's a diplomatic mission in Kampala. There's a, a diplomatic mission in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in Ethiopia. There's a diplomatic mission in Dar es Salaam. We've done. We've done well. With our neighbors, the government cannot be faulted. It is about the church. The church, I'm talking about the church. The church in Kenya, stop working individually. Stop thinking about religion. Let the church begin thinking about the kingdom of God. Let's have a kingdom mentality and be able to come together and do what God wants us to do. Hallelujah. Uh, the fourth thing I want us to ponder about is that if the church will continue, this is important, and sometimes I, I, I'm at pains when I talk about this, is that the church, if the church will continue delaying its assignment, God will send salvation to these nations through other sources. Through other sources, God will send salvation. Because the prophecy must come to pass. The prophecy says that in that time, a present, in other words, gifts, in other words, sacrifice, will be brought to the Lord of hosts from East African nations. From a people that are tall, from a people that are similar of skin, from a people that are terrible, from a people that are powerful and trading down, and from the land whose rivers divide. There will be they will present gifts. In other words, these people, there will be a group of people that will become Christians from these nations. But uh, there might be few. Uh, what God wants us to do is, Kenya, can we do our part? So that we begin influencing these nations. The church needs to begin influencing these nations so that they become, all the kingdoms of this world, they become the kingdoms of our Lord and of our Christ. Could I have an amen? Now, the prophecy will still be fulfilled because God promises to make it, to, make, to, to ensure that these people will make it to heaven. Why? Uh, you may be asking, Pastor Kirung, why are you, uh, why are you so confident? Uh, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, that um, in heaven there will be people out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. So from everywhere, from every tribe, from every tongue, from every nation, there will be people that will go to heaven. In other words, there will be Chinese in heaven. There will be Somalis in heaven. There will be Ethiopians in heaven. There will be Southern Sudanese in heaven. There will be Ugandans in heaven. There will be Tanzanians in heaven. So, there will be people. This God will send. In fact, let me tell you something. 
because we've received testimonies after testimonies. We've, because the messenger has not gone, let me tell you something. I want to tell you because this one I've, I've got it from a very, a very, a, a very uh, uh, credible spiritual source. That God himself has been visiting some villages in Somalia. And those people, they have actually seen the Lord Jesus Christ himself appearing to them. And the only thing is that they are only fearing because of other religions. Because of other religions. You know what I mean. I will not be able to talk about it here. They are only fearing that their life would be at stake. But deep within their hearts, they have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Why is it happening? Why is God being forced to go? Why is God being forced to send angels? It's because the messenger has not gone. Brethren, these people, they will be saved. God will send salvation to these people through another source if you refuse to go. So I'm talking to the Church of Kenya. Let's organize ourselves. Let's have a kingdom mentality. Let's not be thinking about religion. Kenya is not short of religion. But the kingdom mentality is what is missing out in the church. Let's think, because that is why Jesus came. He came to preach the gospel of the kingdom. Could I have an amen? Now, uh, I, want, I want also to conclude and encourage Kenyans that um, the Bible also considers a reward for Kenya that we will not be left alone. There will be a reward that will come upon this nation because of fulfilling our assignments. And because of that, God will not close his eyes. He will also think about passing a reward for this great nation. Number one, the Bible says in the book of Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 10, it says, from, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. In other words, it simply means from Kenya. Could I have a man? My worshippers, the daughter of my dispersed ones, shall bring my offering. Now, brethren, let me tell you something. As these nations will present a gift to the God of Mount Zion, because of our, because of our role, God does not intend us that we only be, we only be, uh, we only be flower girls and uh, escorting these people to heaven. Even us, we will make it to heaven. Could I have an amen? And therefore the Bible says, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my worshippers, the people who worship God from this nation, the daughters of the dispersed ones, eh? daughters of the people who will have gone as, a, as ambassadors in these countries, in these nations, they shall bring offerings. Could I have an amen? They shall present our gifts. They shall present our sacrifice to the Lord Most High. Could I have an amen? And therefore, the scripture envisages that Kenya will be a, a great Christian nation that will worship the God of Israel. Now, our labor is not going to be in vain. Uh, when we begin going out, God is going to reward us with eternal life in heaven. So as we complete our assignment, we will not be left behind without a reward. And therefore, I want to call upon all Kenyans, let's pray. Let's pray for this great nation. Let's arise from wherever we are and accomplish the divine assignment that God has given this great nation. I've got a few recommendations as we, as, as we conclude this series. I've got seven of them actually, and I want to, to, to share them with humility to the church in Kenya and even, to the, and even to the government of this nation if they are able to accept these recommendations. Number one, let the church and the state work together uh, to accomplish this divine assignment. Uh, uh, let the church and the state work together. Let us work together. Let not be pulling apart there's no way the government will achieve, will achieve its purposes without the church. And there's no way the church will achieve its purposes without the government. So let's work together. At number two, the president. And every, let every county governor and the president, let them incorporate in their leadership Christian spiritual advisors. Full of the Holy Ghost. Not any, anybody who is called Christian, not anybody who has a certificate of theology, let that person be somebody qualified and somebody full of the Holy Spirit. You must ensure that he is full of the Holy Ghost before you appoint them in your position, in the position to become spiritual advisors. Why am I saying this? I know it is easy for a, a leader in this country to appoint a political advisor. It's very easy for them to appoint an economic advisor. It's very easy for them to, to appoint a, 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 an advisor on a certain region of this, for a certain region of this world. But very few think about appointing spiritual advisors. Let me tell you, brethren, one of the things that has made America to be a great nation in this world, it is because they always have the greatest servants of God. They are actually incorporated 
as spiritual advisors to the president of that great nation. Hallelujah. So we need to know who is the spiritual advisor to the president of this country. We need to know who is the spiritual advisor to the governor of this county. Let them, let them incorporate. Don't, don't appoint just a PA. Appoint spiritual, a spiritual, somebody who will tell you this is what God said. Let me tell you something. Even an evil leader like Herod of the Bible, he was such an evil leader. But when he was told about the birth of Jesus, he was able to call even the religious leaders of that country to ask them, what does the scripture say about the birth of this, of this king? And they were able to tell him that this is what the scripture says. This is what the Bible says. Even an evil leader was able to have spiritual leaders. How come people that are called to be Christians, they don't have spiritual advisors in their, in their kitchen cabinet? I'm talking about the kitchen cabinet. You must have somebody who listens to God and somebody who gives you advice. What, why am I, am I saying this? I'm saying it is impossible to lead the people of God without the God of the people. It is impossible. And we must tell you that the only way you can lead the people of God is to ensure that you are working with the God of the people. And to work with the God of the people, you must work with the servants of the God of the people. Could I have an amen? Number three, I want you to make every effort to maintain and sustain good diplomatic relations with all our neighbors. Let the government do it. Let the church do it. We do every effort. Whenever there is a diplomatic spot with our, with our neighboring nations, we must do everything possible to ensure that there is peace. And we must do it quickly. We should never be in a diplomatic challenge with our neighbors. Always we should have good diplomatic relations. Uh, the fourth recommendation I want to give is that I want to give to our government and everybody else in this country, ignore global politics that leads this nation towards having a bad spiritual and diplomatic relations with Israel. If our people are going to be presenting gifts to the God of Mount Zion, it simply says that we've got to have good relations with Israel. Did you know that these children of Israel have the blessing of Abraham upon them? And God told them that I will bless those who bless you and I'll curse those who curse you. So are you ready for the blessing or the curse? If you want the blessing of Jehovah, then you must maintain good relationship with Israel. Any advisor that points you to taking positions to what Israel hates, remove them from your group of advisors. Number five, let Kenya have a new beginning that is founded on Christ. Let's have a new beginning. We, can, we have no control of our history, but we have control of our future. And therefore, let's have a new beginning. Let's have a new beginning founded on Christ and on this revelation truth. It must be founded on these two things, founded on Christ and on this revelation truth. Uh, there are countries in this, uh, of Africa, when they were doing it, they did it. They ensured that their nations were founded on Christ. Ghana, it is one of them, where the leader who was taking over from, from, uh, from the colonial government, he did a symbolic walk, and he walked backwards a hundred steps backwards, every step representing the year that the colonial government worked in that nation. And uh, he took a hundred steps, year by year, diplomatically to declare that we are doing everything that the colonialists did. And from now onwards, we are beginning, we are going back to our crossroads, and we are beginning on a new slate, whereby we, this nation will be founded on the Lord Jesus Christ. And after that, you know, that is, it happened in, even in Zambia. And they did that. They have they found their nations on Christ Jesus. They are not founded on bloodshed. They are not founded on, on, the, on, the, on, on the foundation of this country, whereby we say that we are lying on bloodshed. We are lying on, a, on, a, on ethnicity. This is the foundation. That's why we've gotten it wrong. Now, you can see history has shown that even when the first president of Ghana took over, there were some bad, evil people who came and took over that government and they stopped him from continuing. But what God did, because of the foundation, he brought somebody to come and remove them and set up structures. And that person left the country, uh, he left the power and went back, he was a soldier, and he went back to the barracks. But even the new people who came, they decided to do something wrong. 
he came back again and removed them. And they ensured that he set up good foundation and structures before he retired back to the barracks. And after that, because of that, the people, they were very happy with him. And they, when they went for democratic elections, he was the first one to be voted again in a civilian government. And he led them well. Today, Ghana is one of the nations that if, even elections is not a problem. Uh, the whole people, they can support the president in power to the end. And, on the, and the, when they can go and vote him out. And that president will have no problem. He will go home and another one will take over peacefully. Not in Kenya. Why is it not happening in Kenya? It's because Kenya, there's a curse. We must start again. We must break the foundations on which our forefathers, the mistakes they made, and get the right foundation that God wants us to have. Number six, and this is radical. I want to give a sixth recommendation and a radical recommendation. And this one I know is going to be fought, but I'm, I'm, I love to say it because this is what the Spirit of God has led me. Let Kenya's flag be, let the flag of Kenya radically change its theme from the past to its future, taking into account the divine assignment. What am I saying? I'm saying is, let's get rid of those dangerous colors in the in the flag. What are those? There's the color red. Let's, let, let's get, rid, get rid of it. There's a color that is black, which depicts darkness. Let's remove it. Let's get colors, let's get themes that will actually connect us to the divine assignment of sending ambassadors. Hallelujah. We are supposed to send peace emissaries. And let the right colors be in that flag. Let's be thinking about our future. Could I have an amen? And then the last recommendation I want to give is that um, let all civil leaders at all level, let them avoid the Rehoboam mistake. What was it? What was it? You need to read the Bible. The Rehoboam was the third king of Israel. And he made a big mistake that he lost the kingdom. It was divided geographically in half, and he lost over 80% of the population. He only remained with less than, less than a, a, a 20% to be the people that were following him. And every the nation and the kingdom was lost. Let's avoid that mistake. And what was it? He simply refused to listen to advice of leaders, of elders. He decided, he decided to listen to advice of children, of the youth. And he brought chaos in that nation, and that nation never became the same again. If you're a leader, let's avoid the Rehoboam mistake. And therefore, let's, con let's concentrate on working with the elders. Let's get an elder's advice. If you're a leader, ensure that you need to find out what is an elder saying about this particular issue. And then let the youth implement what the elders say. Hallelujah. In other words, I'm saying let the youth be implementers and let the elders be advisors and not the vice versa, whereby the elders are the implementers and the youth are the advisors. It should, not, it should never happen. It will never go, it will never go for such a nation. In fact, in fact the uh, Wahenga have said, Ngoma Yavijana Haikeshi. Hallelujah. That's Wahenga, and I think it was a spiritual. It was spiritual, it is backed up in the Bible. And therefore, I want to advise everybody, wherever they are, please, if you're a leader, know that you can survive on the council of the elders and the strength of the youth is to implement what the advice or policy that has been made by the leaders. This is the advice I want to give this nation and uh, I want to conclude by saying that the book says, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 1 to 6, the Bible says, again the word of the Lord came to me saying, son of man, speak to the children of the people, of your people, and say to them, when I bring a sword upon the land, and the people of the land take a man from their territory and make him their watchman. When, the seas of the, when he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does, not, and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes a warning will save his life. This is the scripture I want to conclude with by telling you, brethren, that um, I know I'm one of the smallest uh, speakers in Kenya. 
I'm all, I'm all the, the lowest pastors in the church in this great country. I've got my seniors, whatever they are. But today, I'm only standing as a watchman, be able to show you the danger that is coming from outside. And um, you can take it or leave it. But the Bible is very clear that if you don't take such an advice, then the sword will come upon you and then you will be the one who will give an account for your own. But if you take this advice, it will save your life. Could I have an amen? Like Ezekiel, brethren, I am just, I'm simply a watchman and a gatekeeper. I'm blowing the warning trumpet that can save the lives of people of Kenya and the people of East Africa. Like John the Baptist, in a, the book of John chapter 1, verse 22, 22, 23, I'm simply the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way for the coming of the Lord. One of the things you must prepare in this nation is that Jesus is coming again. So it's a, there are some things you must not do because Jesus is coming again. He is coming again. He is coming again. And whatsoever we do, brethren, what the Bible says, we must do. We must do it quickly because Jesus is coming again and he is coming quickly. Hallelujah. With these few remarks, brethren, may the Lord bless you all and may the Lord bless his holy word. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. I want to, uh, I want to thank you for following this telecast wherever you are. And I've got just a few issues I want to ask. If there's anybody who followed this telecast and you had this message and you're a great Kenyan, and uh, I want you to know that there's no way you can achieve this, uh, this assignment outside Christ. The only person that can help you fulfill this divine assignment, and God will ask you when you go to heaven, if you're a Kenyan, and he'll ask you whether did you send ambassadors. And the only way you can be able to send ambassadors or become an ambassador of Christ, it begins by giving your life to Jesus. And we're saying, Pastor, I'm that person. I want to give my life to Jesus. So whatever you are, I want you to close your eyes. You can even kneel down in your living room or in your sitting room and just make this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I thank you for speaking to me. I thank you for granting me the privilege of being a Kenyan. I thank you for showing me that there's a great divine assignment that you've given us and you've given to me as a Kenyan. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to have mercy on me. I ask you to cleanse all my sins and erase my name in the book of judgment and enter my name in the book of life. From now onwards, Lord Jesus, I want to live for you. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, I pray. And wherever you are, you can say, Amen and Amen. If you made that prayer, I want to ask you to get in touch with us. Just follow those contacts under the screen. And uh, we want to be, to, to be a blessing to you and be a partaker of, of, of the blessings of God upon your lives by helping you to grow, to fulfill God's divine assignment upon your life. Hallelujah. I want to uh, take this time and pray for brethren wherever you are in your homes. I want to pray for you again. I've told you that I've been, I've been praying for you, but I want to pray for you right now, wherever you are. And I want to ask you, wherever you are, just put your hand on your heart like this, and let's make this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for these brethren who are following this telecast and all the members of GCA Kitengela. Lord, I commit them to mighty hands right now. Father, I ask you to bless them. I pray, Father God, that you will protect them. I ask you to supply all their needs in accordance with the riches and glory by Christ Jesus. By this prayer, O oh Lord, I declare that if there's anyone among them who is sick, let your healing be upon their lives. I pray that you'll send your word that will be healing to their flesh and strength to their bones. I make a decree right now, whatever they are, let them be safe. And no pandemic and no calamity we reach near them, neither in their dwelling place. Let their places of, of dwelling be, be blessed. Let wealth and riches be in their houses. Let their food and water be blessed. Let whatsoever good thing they touch with their hands to do be blessed. I decree every blessing of Abraham upon their lives. Even them that are doing business, Father God, and them that are at work, protect them. I pray that business people, Father God, who have heard this message, I ask you to bless them and multiply them. In blessing, bless them. In multiplying, multiply them. Like the sand of the seashore and like the stars of the heavens, 
Let this blessing be their portion upon their lives wherever they are. I thank you, Jesus, because you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think. I pray for them that have been affected in their place of work by the COVID-19 pandemic, them that have lost their jobs, them that have lost their businesses. Father, I ask you to open new doors for them. Because, Father, we belong to the kingdom of God, I pray that the principles of the kingdom of God will apply in their lives, and whatsoever thing they saw, Father God, they shall be able to reap. Like Isaac, Father God, who sowed and reaped seeds in the same year, let this be true to their lives, that as they sow their seeds, let them reap a harvest a hundredfold in their times. I thank you, Jesus, because you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think in accordance with the power that works in us. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people, wherever you are, say, Amen, and Amen, and Amen, and Amen. Amen. Thank you, brethren. We've come to the end of our service, and uh, we want to share the benediction with you. Whatever you are, just stand up. Whatever you are, let's share the, the words of grace. Hallelujah. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Our faith confession, surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless you. See you next Sunday. May the Lord be with you. Amen and amen.